How's it going everybody? The kids decided they wanted to do a little fishing with their friends on a Sunday and I thought what a better opportunity to come out here, set up my vertical antenna and answer a question that came up a lot in my vertical antenna telescoping antenna video. And it was, why don't you just elongate the thing as long as it can get and then use the tuner? So that would mean tuning it for like say 40 meters if this is a 17 foot whip, you're roughly gonna get 20 meters out of it. So using it to tune up 40, uh, or leave it at its length, but then tune it to 10 meters or 15 or something along those lines. First, to make this a bit easier for everybody to digest, let's go back to the ham shack. I got a bit of a drawing to walk through with you. So we're all on the same base level. So we've been playing around with the idea of a vertical antenna in the last couple of videos, right? This is a one quarter wavelength antenna, meaning the length of this antenna is one quarter of the actual representation of the wavelength. And then you've got radials underneath it, right? And if you're looking at a coax, the pin is the center and the shield is the negative. And this is the two sides of the antenna. It's an equally half wave antenna when you incorporate the radials underneath it. Antennas also come in half wavelength varieties, the dipole, and then you can have a full loop antenna. And I know I'm drawing a square, but you know, you'd have this suspended via trees or something on the ground like mass or whatnot. And then they'd be tethered to it to hold it up on the air, right? So these are three of the types of antennas you see. When you're talking about 20 meters, you roughly have an antenna at one quarter wavelength that is half of that of a 40 meter antenna for 7.200 megahertz, for instance, it's just kind of as an example. But how do you actually calculate the length of these? Well, you do that with a relatively simple equation of about 300,000 meters per second, which is roughly the speed of light, divided by whatever the frequency is that you want to operate on. So if we're at 14.250 megahertz, again, divided by 300, you get roughly 21.05 meters. So that's a full wave loop antenna, a full wavelength antenna, 5.26 meters. And then if you divide that by four, and if you convert the 5.26 meters into feet, you get roughly 17.257 feet, which is going to be equal to what we put here for this antenna. One quarter wavelength is going to be 17.25 feet. And you can do the same math against 40 meters, against 10 meters, whatever it is. You just take the actual frequency that you want to operate on and then perform the calculation and you get roughly the number you're looking for in terms of the length of the antenna you want. Makes sense? Makes sense. This Now in the last video I showed you a quarter wavelength antenna, meaning this is one quarter of the wire you would need to be resonant on a particular frequency. In this case, we're using 14.250 megahertz. And I got asked, Josh, why don't you just use the same antenna, throw something called a transmatch or an antenna tuner, and sometimes they're standalone boxes and sometimes they're inside the radio itself, and just tune this vertical to whatever you wanted. So say, instead of 14.250, we wanted to go to 7.200 megahertz, which is lower frequency and or 28.300 megahertz, which is a higher frequency, right? Well, the, there's two separate things that happen here. Let's, let's take the first one first, so the 7.200 megahertz. If you tried to take an antenna analyzer and you set it to 7.200 megahertz and you mapped it or you did an analysis against this one quarter wavelength antenna, you would get some kind of a mismatch and it would be represented in the form of an SWR readout, standing wave ratio readout. And let's just, for argument's sake, say that it is a 10 to 1 mismatch. This antenna is just too short to do 7.200 megahertz effectively, efficiently, etc. So you turn on your transmatch, and it gives a 50 ohm load to your radio, making it happy. So the radio pushes its RF down the feed line. The, tra the transmatch also pushes the power down the feed line, and then it gets to the antenna. Now the antenna is just too short. It's still too short no matter what the antenna matching device does. So you're only gonna get a percentage of that 10 to one mismatch out. Let's say it's only 10%. So 10% of your RF now is radiating out of that antenna when you use it. 
That's bad. We don't want that. That's a, a waste of power. We are radiating heat more than we're radiating RF energy. So it's usually not a good idea to use a short antenna for something that's very low frequency, like 7.200 megahertz. Instead, what you can do is you can take a coil of wire and we'll put it at the base of the antenna. And then let's say, take that same length of antenna. So let's say it's a 17 foot ish antenna and we'll attach it to roughly 17 to 20 feet of coil. And then we'll connect that to the radio. Well, that's probably gonna give you a much better match. That's gonna be closer to like 1.5 to 1 SWR, maybe even better than that. There are some losses that you get with using a coil down at the base. There are better ways to do it, maybe mounting it here in the middle or doing something else along those lines. But this is way more effective than trying to use a short piece of wire to get you a low frequency. So what's it on the other side, the 28.300 megahertz side? Well, that's a little more interesting. Within, within this antenna, you do have a length of wire that is one quarter wavelength or maybe five eighths wavelength of 28.300 megahertz. So it will radiate and you can use a transmatch to help you out with that. But by having longer of an antenna than you need, you now pick up something uh, that is also undesirable. So if you remember the antenna pattern for a vertical antenna, right? You've got a, a wire and then you have two lobes if you're looking at it you know, horizontally and you wanna see that radiation pattern. It's kinda of gonna go out like that. It's gonna come back in and you're gonna get another one over here and it's gonna come back in. And basically this gives you just omnidirectional radiation of power, right? And so it's just gonna look like a circle really. And that circle is your top down look of the antenna. So if you had an antenna, it's radiating in all directions, omnidirectionally and everything's great, everything's good. You also get the added benefit of low takeoff angles like we talked about on the first video. Well, what happens when you have a longer antenna than the frequency you're operating on, 28.300 megahertz? You get weird propagation. So let's draw that vertical again. We're looking at it from the side and here is it from top down. So what you're gonna get in those situations is weird lobes as we call them. And those weird lobes kind of appear spiky on analyzer programs that do this kind of stuff. And those lobes have these high points and then they have these low points. And it might look a bit like this on the, uh, on the vertical. It's not gonna be exact, I appreciate. Um, and I'm also not an artist in these kind of things. But these deep valleys where there's no RF is called a null. And that's where you're not putting out any power. And then there'll be some areas where you are putting out power. Now, fundamentally, this is fine. It's still working and you're, you're, you're okay in using this, but it's very unpredictable. It's very unpredictable and you're not sure where that power is going and it's difficult to test where that power is going. So for those situations, instead of using your transmat or your antenna tuner to adjust it, we simply say, well, just shorten the antenna so that it's resonant for whatever frequency you're gonna be operating on. Again, 28.300. So it's always better to physically adjust the wire whether you need to add length to it or reduce length for whatever frequency you're going to be using. You gotta... So I got my universal claw that we talked about and I got this piece of wood here. So I'm going to set this up with a vertical. And since they're fishing, I'm going to throw a line in the water too, but it's going to be from a radio. I literally got this uh, a couple days ago in the mail from Amazon, so I haven't mounted the, the radial screw like with a wing nut or something like that, so I'm literally just going to put the no, through the jaws. Okay. Is it my turn? What? Is it my turn? Guys, can I play with the sound? Grammy! What is mine? Grammy, I'm going to get your turn. Yeah. Look, I checked your book! Yeah. Alright, I'm checking. Oh! Oh, oh my god. Where did you get this pick of a of a coke? Put the jacket on first. So this is a fun one. Because the wires, the radial wires, are not actually touching the water, we've effectively made an elevated radial. So the lengths of the yellow wires need to be one quarter wavelength of the operating frequency, in this case 20 meters. And sure enough, check that out. So got it down to 1.07 at 14.08, which is perfect for FT8. 
although I didn't bring a computer. So uh, maybe we'll see if I can plug into my phone or something uh, along those lines. But yeah, let's pull the radio on and see if we can hear anybody. Good news. We've got signals coming in through the uh, IFT8 app. Very good. QSL is uh, uh, a lot. Uh, we've got a bunch of calling and not much time to go. They're going to pull a plug on the in about... Uh, 73, uh, QSL information. Uh, QSL information. Uh, QSL information. Uh, NASCAR race that we just run. NASCAR. NASCAR. Kilo India 6, November, Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Yeah, this is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, Southern California coming. You, uh, you're coming in as a 5959 here. Alright, very good. Nice report. Uh, I've got you at about a 5555 at the moment. And uh, QRB. Good picking the launch. And uh, find us on QRZ for the uh, our special QSL party. I'd like to have one. Love it. Thanks for getting out there and making contact. 7-3. So hopefully that made some sense to you as far as how we uh, think of these antennas, right? So somewhere in the 17 foot length for 20 meters where it's resonant, you probably have a quarter wave, a 5 eighths wave or something like that of the higher frequency spaces you'd want to be. So 10 meters. All right. So what happens if you tune up an antenna like this on 10 meters? What you're gonna get is spiky disks. The pattern of the antenna, the radiation pattern, will have jagged edges and knolls. And where there are jags, that's the part where your actual you know, RF is, is propagating, is, is getting out. But then the null spots, or the corners, where you're close to the antenna, there's nothing getting down there. So it becomes a very erratic, non-predictable type of communication, which is suboptimal, right? There's also probably some efficiency loss in there as well, but mainly it's pattern that's the problem when you're talking about higher frequencies. So think like 10 meters again. So that's why we adjust the 17 foot width down to the right length for 10 meters. Very, very important. All right, so you add the antenna tuner, right? A radio that has a tuner or a secondary one. And what happens is while your transmitter is happy because your transmitter is getting a 50 ohm load, it thinks everything's good, but it doesn't change the characteristics of the antenna that you're transmitting into. So if it's a poorly mismatched antenna, so say nine to one, uh, so standing wave ratio match on 40 meters, because it's a 20 meter antenna, it's still not gonna be efficient, right? When you your transmitter's happy, you're pushing that RF through the coax into the antenna, but the antenna is still mismatched nine to one. So that ratio is the amount of power you will lose in the form of heat, and you won't be radiating that energy. So yes, you can use a tuner to get you down to 40 meters, but it won't effectively transmit. You won't be putting out a lot of power. Now, you can add a coil, like a base-loaded coil to your, to your whip, that you have here and that will get you the right amount of material in the air so that your antenna will be more effective but using a loading coil is not going to be as efficient as if you just had a really long vertical run of wire or really long whip for 40 meters right so that's why we don't generally use the tune on the higher side of the frequency so 10 meters if you have a 20 meter antenna you're gonna pick up knolls and you're gonna get weird propagation because you do have the right length, you have more than enough length, 
but because it's not cut for the right for the right frequency you're transmitting on, you're not going to effectively be transmitting, right? There's the first there's the first one. And then for lower frequencies, meaning you're lacking material in the form of an antenna up in the air, you will lose power output. You will be less efficient, you will not be effectively transmitting on things like 40 meters. So add a coil, lengthen the wire where possible. That's the best thing to do, as always, for getting an antenna to be effective, to get that RF out into the sky. Radio. That's a radio? Yeah. Amateur radio. Uh, so it's connected to this antenna right here. And uh, we were able to talk to somebody in South Dakota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a, a bad speaker, but uh, I usually use headphones. It's actually just What are you even talking on, though? Uh, another radio. So they just have another radio where they're at, and uh, you can talk to them via this. Yeah. That's crazy. The kids wanted to come fish, so I was like, all right, well, I'll bring my radio out and listen. That's crazy.